Hello, we are Russian Samiksha and Tasvika, and we'll present our study on what is beautiful and rich is mentally healthy. We investigated whether attractive women possessing high SES are presumed to have better mental health. This was crucial knowledge since in the modern world, SES disparities and beauty standards can shape a person's future. In a mock jury study, more attractive defendants were found to be less guilty even with compelling cases against them. In other mock interview studies, more attractive candidates were seen as more fit for accounting jobs. Our study was an extension of the findings of Dion and colleagues back in 1972 on the what is beautiful is good stereotype. Their findings revealed that more attractive people are more socially accepted. They argued that since attractiveness is readily observable, it can serve as a basis for judgment about an individual's overall quality. Due to a self-fulfilling prophecy, the more attractive individuals would eventually internalize the positive characteristics attributed to them, continuing the cycle of social advantage. We also found an interesting concept called EST, Expectation Status Theory, suggesting that observable and most accessible characteristics of a person have the strongest influence on the judgment process. This phenomenon is true cross-culturally. A 2022 study found that across 11 regions worldwide, the what is beautiful is good stereotype exists with an interaction between gender and attractiveness favoring more attractive women. Given the predisposition to associate attractiveness with personality traits such as mental health, we were curious to explore how the addition of SES as a second factor may influence this association. Our research questions were as follows. Are more attractive women presumed to have better mental health with the main effect of attractiveness? Are women possessing high SES presumed to have better mental health with main effect of SES? And are more attractive women possessing high SES presumed to have a very good mental health with an interaction between attractiveness and SES? We hypothesize that the answer to all these questions would be yes. This study is a two by two within subjects designed with the mental health rating as a dependent variable and attractiveness and SES as independent variables. Amiksha. So originally we had 136 participants and with the exclusion rules, we ended up with 90 participants. One thing to note about the exclusion rule, we originally had an intention check to see which participants were paying enough attention to give effective data. But after the survey was closed, the survey was looked at again, and it was concluded that the way the question was presented in the survey could have been mistaken to be part of the question itself. So looking at the appendix, the way the question was um, put in the survey, one participant may have thought that we were asking them to rate the individual as a four or five, and they disagreed and still put what they thought. Um, the person should have been rated as, or it could have been simply mistaken to be an error or incomplete part of the survey. Therefore, anyone who failed the attention check did not have their data removed. Taswika? For our study, the materials used were carefully selected to support the integrity and effectiveness of our research process. Participants engaged with our study through a reliable device with an internet connection, ensuring accessibility and ease of use. The Allocate Monster system played a critical role in randomizing the order of the questionnaire to avoid order bias. We used Qualtrics, a sophisticated online survey platform, to design and distribute our questionnaire. It allowed us to embed attention checks seamlessly to ensure the validity of our data. The Chicago Faces database provided us with a diverse set of images, aiding in the objective assessment of attractiveness across various demographics. To further ensure the focus of our participants, articles from reputable sources like the Globe and Mail were used as additional material within our survey. Responses were measured on a six-point Likert scale, giving us a nuanced understanding of participants' perceptions. Lastly, camouflage items were interposed throughout to disguise the main intent of the questionnaire, maintaining the study's blind design. With these materials, we were able to construct a rigorous study, facilitating a detailed exploration of the relationships between attractiveness, socioeconomic status, and perceptions of mental health. Next. 
In our study, we meticulously crafted a methodology to ensure robust and reliable results. Here is how we proceeded. We recruited participants through various modern channels, such as social media, emails, and text messages, casting a wide net to ensure a diverse sample. To mitigate order effects and control for potential bias, we employed counterbalancing using a tool known as Allocate Monster. This ensured each participant had a unique and randomized exposure to the study conditions. Participants began by completing a demographic survey, providing basic information such as age, date of birth, address, and a photograph. This was complemented by a questionnaire featuring both direct items related to our study and camouflage items to disguise the research focus. Attention checks were interposed to validate participant engagement and the reliability of the responses. Responses were gauged on a six-point Likert scale, roughing from one indicating very poor to representing excellent. This scale measured participants' perceptions across various scenarios. Each participant was exposed to all four conditions of the study, allowing us to compare and contrast their reactions to different stimuli, and in turn, draw comprehensive conclusions about the effects of attractiveness and SES on mental health perception. Samiksha? So here we have the graphs for all four conditions. For this condition specifically, we're looking at the mental health of more attractive and high SCS women. We have the average mental health score with the frequency of each Likert scale uh, number. So for this graph, we're looking, it, it backs up our prediction that women who are more attractive with higher SCS are um, on average rated much higher. We can also see here that there's no person that is rated a one um, with the mean also being 3.85. Next. For this condition, we're looking at the mental health of more attractive and low SES. One thing to note here, maybe some participants were a little confused at this point um, with the individual being more attractive, but with the low SES. So there's a lot of variability here with people uh, rating the individual from one through six, which didn't happen in any other category. Next. For the mental health of less attractive and high SES, we're starting to see with the less attractive group, um, no women are rated in the category of six. Um, and we're starting to see the mean come down as well to 3.16. Next. For the final uh, condition here with a less attractive woman and low SES, um, we're starting to see that there's no person that is rated six as well as very few individuals in rated five as well. Um, this also backs up our original prediction that it is the opposite that women who are less attractive with low SES had the lowest mean at 2.68 and uh, in general just rated a lot lower than the more attractive and higher SES group. Next. For the results, uh, we used an ANOVA to test and analyze the results. Um, this was helpful to see the means between all the conditions. And we can see here that we had a main effect of SCS and a main effect of attractiveness. However, there was no significant interaction. Um, there could be two reasons to why there was no significant interaction. Uh, one could be that this was an extension of the what is beautiful is good stereotype and we didn't know what our results would be like so maybe there could be no interaction at all with these variables um, and number two would be that perhaps our sample size was too small we had 90 participants and we could have had maybe a lot more and perhaps seen a interaction machine our data aligns with the findings of the Yanan colleagues, confirming that attractiveness correlates with positive mental health judgments. Both attractiveness and SES significantly predict better mental health perceptions independently. It is essential for professional settings like clinical psychology and human resources to acknowledge these biases while helping to refine social cognitive theories by understanding how superficial qualities affect mental health judgments. Understanding the effects of attractiveness, SES, and the interaction between the two on mental health perception is a key factor for implementing better teaching, 
a more just employment system, and a more prepared mental health care system. We thank all participants and York University for their contributions. Thank you for your attention.